good to be in the house of the Lord this Amen. morning. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, before I get started, I want to say something about Brother Stanley, his wife, wife's night. The Spirit of the Holy Ghost was in this place oh, last amen. night. Amen. You know, uh, one thing he said that we was talking about a little bit, he said God spoke to him and said, separate yourself. God spoke the very same thing to me one time. He said, separate yourself and come from amongst them. I said, why, Lord, I love them people so much. He said, they may make you bow instead of worship. And uh, it was this church. I was a born Christian. I didn't know what was going on, and I won't get into it uh, because of, uh, deeply because I wouldn't want anybody to know about it. But there was things going on that was so against the Holy Ghost here. And uh, I left and I went to uh, another church and received the Holy Ghost. And <clears throat> God really made a difference in my life after that. Yeah. I'm thankful for Brother Alan Casey that uh, walked me up to the aisle and came back and talked to me that night that I received the Lord as my Savior on this altar here. Had it not been for that, I probably wouldn't be alive today because I really believe that preaching and preaching God has in increased my health to where it's way better than it was 20 years ago. I was diagnosed as to be almost dead at one time. Had COPD and congestive heart failure and a whole lot of other things. Had blood pressure that run 236 over 130 for a year. It was that way. I was so dizzy, I'd have to pull off the highway and park to let my head clear up. And God cleared all that up. And, uh, I mean, God wants, he is our friend. And he wants us to be a friend with him. This morning, this message that God has given it's a tough one, let me tell you. And uh, he dealt with me last night on it. Uh, after being here, God gave me this message. This is the subject I want to preach on. The divine order is first salvation, then works. So I want to get into this, what? God intends to do for us. This is uh, in first in Romans one, and starting with the verse that's been up there this morning, uh, uh, sixteen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. <coughs> if I can get my throat cleared up, uh, I want to read a little bit in the co uh, commentary uh, here about this subject that I'm going to preach on, salvation. The Hebrew and Greek words for salvation <coughs> implies, or 
salvation imply the idea of deliverance. That's the first word. Safety is the second one. Uh, per, per, uh, Perturbation, to get it right. Perturbation, healing, and soundness. Salvation is the great inclusive word of the gospel, gathering into all into itself all the redemptive acts and process as justification. That's another one. Redemption, grace, repetition, imputation, forgiveness, sanctification, and glorification. Salvation is in three tenses. One, the believer has been saved from the guilt and penalty of sin. Um, and it gives scriptures, I'm not going to get into all them, which would be very important in this message, but it'll be long enough without me giving all these <laughs> scriptures. Uh, <coughs> number two, the believer is being saved from the habit, habit, and domination of sin. A lot of people is really addicted to things of sin that they on their own cannot break free from. I had a brother that passed away a lot of years ago. He was addicted to alcohol. He would tell me everything so often he'd say I quit drinking and he would be hiding his drink all the time still drinking but he wanted people to believe that he was trying to do better and he got to where he would tell things that wasn't true to try to get free from the what the way that he was bound um and it's got a lot, lots and lots of scriptures there. Three, the believer is to be saved in the sense of entire conformity to Christ. And that's Romans uh, 12 and 2, I believe, that have been transformed, not conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, and then it says salvation is by grace through faith is a free gift and holy without works. You're saved. And then you get into the works that God gives you to do. The divine order is First, salvation, then works. I want to get into the scriptures on this this morning. And they're probably completely different than you would think they would be because this is in the things that happened in Sodom and, Magog uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, if I can get my words straight this morning. And the uh, but if they was bad there, how are they in this day and time? Yeah. They was bad enough there that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. One of these days, Jesus Christ is going to come back to this world. And this leads into judging people here. And it tells us we better be careful about judging. Yeah. Because, you know, if we're guilty of uh, judging people for things that they're doing and we're doing the same thing, 
we're not going to escape the judgment of God. In other words, get right with God, stay right with God, and let Jesus be the one that goes to the Father. And as they, they were singing last night uh, about, I can't even think of the words to about uh, having telephone took straight to heaven. What is that? Jesus so, on the main line. That's it. Jesus <laughs> on the main line. When uh, they was singing that, God gave me uh, like just a, a message to myself one time. We had a car sitting in the backyard that Jerry was working on. The name of that car was Direct Connection. It, it was made by Chrysler. I looked at that and God spoke to me and he said, you've got a direct connection. Jesus on the main line with, I thought last night, maybe 10 billion people. But yet he hears each individual person as they pray go to him in prayer. What kind of a God is that? Yeah. How could anyone think that there was anything in Buddha or any of the other idols that they worship that is nothing but just an image sitting there yeah. that there's no life in? It says, uh, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. How true that this is in this day and time. The world is made up of men that hold to ungodliness. Yeah. Men that is leaders of nations that they have no idea of the creator that created them. They, they don't know one thing about God <coughs> and they defy God so much and not just the leaders, but ever so often you run on to someone that is really, the Lord spoke to me and he said they're stiff-hearted. Yeah. Stiff-hearted. I mean, they don't want to let God enter into their heart in any way. Uh, if we abide in, in Jesus Christ, I'm talking about living in him. Him, the spirit of God living in us. We are supposed to be a light to these kind of people. And, and some of them don't want a light. They'd Amen. rather to live in darkness than they would light because that is where they get their comfort from is the dark side. Yeah. I mean the side that was created for the devil and his angels. It shouldn't be for intelligent men or women in the government or even people that is our neighbors. And like you were saying in Sunday school, I've talked a lot about my neighbor, and he was stiff-hearted. But after so long a time, something happened to him. And some way, 
there was some kind of a connection made and he changed. I mean, I'm not saying he become a Christian, but he quit doing the things he was doing. Yeah. Amen. He told people that he had me in his sights many a times. That all he had to do was squeeze the trigger. And I, I would have been gone. But you know what? There's a God that oh, he's, yeah. is yeah. even in control yeah. of people's thoughts uh, and, and what they do and everything. For some reason, God intervened. Yeah. And, and nothing like that took place, even though he would stand over there as we was having church and he would shoot up in the air and he would say the next one's for you. I mean, year after year this went on for probably six or eight years we lived with an enemy that said he was going to kill us all. Wow. That Jesus said the devil came but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm preaching about the people that does wrong, how that the wrath of God is going to fall upon them one day. The wrath of God, I'm talking about the true judgment of God. And you know, as God was giving me this message, he said, I want you to think back about Noah's ark, the size of that ark, and uh, the work of that, that ark had uh, designed for it to do, how it was supposed to carry the seed to start a new world after the world was destroyed back then by water. And he said, I want you to think of the size of that ark. There could not have been very many people that uh, would have fit into that ark. Uh, very few compared to the population of the world. But there was Noah his wife and his sons and his sons' wives. And there, there was enough room. Not only was there animals in the ark, but there was enough seed to start the new crop to grow of everything that needed to be grown. I mean, God started things brand new. We're living in the day, in this day and time, when Jesus is going to come back after a church that is prayed up yeah. without spot and without blemish, <laughs> that means that uh, uh, we need to be seeking after God and his righteousness and uh, we need to be on par for God and everything that we do and say and be aimed at the cause of righteousness uh, for God. Yes. Yes. Amen. And unless we do that, we're liable to find ourselves sliding away from God. Yes. I'm talking about getting cold in Him. I'm talking about backsliding. I would not ever, there's nothing in this world that I want to backslide to. I, I want more of Jesus every day that I live and every day that I live I can see how the evilness of this world how uh, filthy and nasty it must look to God uh, the way that things are going in this day and time and they actually uh, claim that they're uh, doing right by getting out and writing and uh, uh, burning and killing and uh, doing things like that. I don't care what race of people it is. It's wrong for Amen. them to do that. Uh, 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 there's uh, uh, some races, uh, I mean, in this day and time that 
are truly taking advantage of, of unrighteousness and of, of doing it, claiming that it's because of something that happened over here yeah. or over there that has no justification in it at all. We're living in a time that uh, God said there was a time when he winked at ignorance. Uh, he no longer does that in this day and because of the wisdom that is in the world today, the way that technology has increased uh, in the world in this day and time, no one, unless there's something wrong which he mentally is blind enough to see that things are right. Yeah. And uh, I'm preaching about a God that says he'll only take so much. Yeah. Oh, there's been a record kept in heaven today. Yeah. Amen. Brother Don, God is keeping the record about what I'm doing. That's true. Then he says, our holiness in other words it's got to outweigh the righteousness of the Pharisees how righteous was they that our righteousness has got to outweigh their righteousness they was people that went around the scribes and the Pharisees I think the Pharisees wasn't they didn't see fair at all. They looked for fault instead of looking uh, uh, for the righteousness of God. Yeah. They tried continuously to uh, uh, trick Jesus up and uh, prove him to be false. And, and the scribes went around continuously uh, trying to uh, quote the law and tell them what the law was, throwing the law up uh, uh, to point out failures that Jesus went through a cornfield uh, picking corn one day and, and, and other things that he done like healing on Sunday mm -hmm. doing good things that's exactly what is being done in this day of time yes. good is called bad and bad is called good yep. and things are completely and totally in reverse. Yeah. I've got to get on into this. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. I know I've read this already. And unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Oh, we need, uh, we need to know that we're on the straight the narrow, I mean, the path that leads to heaven is straight. That is a straight path. Yeah. And it's narrow. And we need to abide in holiness. And that's where he wants us to be at. It says, uh, the next verse says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has showed it unto them because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has showed it unto them for the invisible things and up here where I started it said I'm not ashamed of the gospel come on I'm preaching the gospel this morning. I'm not going to be ashamed of it. And what I'm getting into, I'm not going to be ashamed of it. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Come on. And this is where I'm going to get into what is hurt, uh, hurtful. It's hurtful to me. It's hurtful to you. It's 
hurtful to anyone that's got children that will not listen to this, that does things that they know that are not right. And if not just gay people, if not just that, there's all kinds of things that are going on. I've got children that are addicted. They like to go to the casino and they, they like to win a thousand dollars and boast about it. What is a thousand dollars in this day and time? More. It, it's nothing. Even if it was a million dollars. For, I mean, if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul, what have you profited from that? Yeah. Yeah. To spend eternity in hell, yeah. in a lake of fire, lost and undone, with never a chance to ever be saved. 21 says, because that when they knew God, at one time, God is talking about people that knew him here. They glorified him not as God. Oh, I think when I preach on stuff like this, I think so much about back when the seats was full here. And a lot of them was my relatives that have fell away from God. Just seemed like one by one by, by one, they fall away. I'm not just talking about my kids. I'm talking about my nieces, nephews, everyone that used to come here that decided that Sunday morning to them was more important for it to be family time, or hunting, a, a day to go hunting, a day to go fishing, until God completely was left out of their life. Yeah. And for us to allow a thing like this to slip up on us, there's no excuse for it. Wow. And it's inexcusable. It says, uh, let me read that 21 over, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. I think of that so much. I know people that are very intelligent all over. I mean, uh, the ones that you see that represent the United States of America, they're, all of them are very educated. They're smart and they argue but sometimes they argue on the side of the devil. Yeah, that's right. His side. Amen. And they're smart enough that they can make it sound right. Yeah. Jesus said, are you a sheep this morning? Come on. Yeah. He said, my sheep know my voice, and another shall not follow. There was a man, I won't call his name, he told me many a time, I'm a goat. He was supposed to be a Christian. Do you know where the Bible says that goats, when Jesus separates them, sheep's going to be on the right hand, the goats are going to be on the left hand, the goats are going to be cast into outer darkness where they're yeah. weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I don't ever want to say I'm a goat for the body. Uh, I may look like one, act like one sometimes, but I want to hear the voice 
of my Lord and Savior speaking to me. I want to know his voice and I, I want to be led by yeah. him. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, to get on, it, it says, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. And this is what I was talking about, images. Like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. They gave up worshiping the true and living God yeah. for all these images made out of some kind of stone, some kind of wood, whatever it might be. Some people are even just plain old tree huggers. They go out and find them a tree and that is their God. Yeah. Or they can find a rock that pleases them to look at and they worship that rock. Might as well as to, might as well as to worship one thing is the other if you're going to go away from God and worship anything. Yeah. Because whatever you worship has got no life in it. Yeah. It, it's just an image there. How foolish can that be? That's true. They profess themselves to be wise. All that, I, there used to be an article in the Piedmont paper from a man that defied Christians all the time. I knew who he was, and I won't call his name because it might cause problems, but he would have an article in the Piedmont paper almost the length of a page every week uh, talking about this imaginary God that we've got, making fun of him. And uh, he didn't know anything about what he was talking about, but he still liked to put his opinion in the Piedmont paper of degrading Christian people yeah. with what his intention was for. And it says, uh, wherefore God gave them up to unclean, uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Once people start, if you've been enlightened <laughs> by God and you start getting away from him and you start been a protector of what the devil has got to offer. It's awful easy for you to get to the place to where God may not ever be able to speak to you again. Yeah. It's important to be a Christian, a true Christian. That don't mean that we're perfect, but it means we've got a repented heart. Yeah. That we repent when we know that we've said something wrong, thought something wrong, done something wrong, Jesus taught forgiveness. Yeah. I mean, he, he said one time wasn't enough, seven times wasn't enough, 70 times seven in a day. Yeah. Uh, I believe there's many a time when I would have to ask him over and over and over because sometimes I allow thoughts and I start thinking this person done me wrong through my life. That person done me wrong. I'm not supposed to think that way. I'm supposed to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yeah. They didn't know what they was doing when they done that. Like my neighbor, I pray that God will forgive him for everything. For he knew not what he was doing. He really didn't know what he was doing. And I'm thankful he never did kill anybody. And it, it, I mean, he did according to the Bible in his heart, but he never did actually commit the act of murder. 
I guess I'm going to have to find a stopping place here. I'll probably have to take this up and preach again next Sunday. I started to say tonight, but <laughs> I guess I won't be preaching tonight. <laughs> but I'll find a place here and stop. I might go on down to the end of the chapter. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women or woman, burned in their lust one toward Another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. For even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. All oh, that is a bad picture to look yes. at there. Yes. To think that a person could slip away from God, you know, I knew a man, anything I read that about, I've had an experience with that. Mm -hmm. I knew a man that was once a great evangelist. He decided he had a girlfriend and she was cheating on him. He decided that he was going to make her jealous. He got a date with a man that night, went out with him. You know what happened to this evangelist? He became gay. I mean, he was gay the rest of his life. Yeah. It don't pay to play around on God. No, it don't. That was talking about fornication this morning. Fornication. That is an example of fornication there. Uh, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, Implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, and not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You know, we even have got to watch what we approve of. Yeah. Because it can lead into such bad ungodliness. And I think it's in this scripture here. It says that they'll be uh, that they'll uh, say it's okay for one accuse them and excuse them. They'll accuse one person of doing wrong and excuse the other person. But, uh, uh, excuse if they think a lot of this one well uh, he's not really to blame they'll find excuses and this one if they don't like him then they accuse him they add more to him and, uh, that is very wrong for us to do that yeah. we're not supposed to have respect as a person That's right. That's we're true. supposed to love everyone the same so I'm going to pause there and 
the next chapter even gets into more, more deeper uh, things that we need to be thinking about, and it gets into judging. I mean, we've got to discern, but we can't say that under no good outfit is not worth anything. <laughs> we can't talk like that. We've got to say, God, I want to see that person say, yeah. I've, I've had to fight saying a lot of things back in the past when we was having all that trouble. And, uh, and I want to say more than that, I don't hear no good out <laughs> and, and uh, Really, I want God to remove him. I prayed that he'd move away from there and we'd never see him again. I didn't want him to die, but I I, but you know what happened, Brother Don? He stayed right where he was at. And I I had to fight every thought that come in my mind to keep what God had given me that I didn't fall into a hate spirit. It's awful easy for us to let our mind, let anger, the spirit of anger, build up and we get to the place where love's not very important anymore. Wow. So I'll leave it there this morning. And there's more to come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord yes. with all of you. Amen. Let's go out there and, and be blessed by the Wallaces again tonight. And, and I'm looking forward to it. Amen. I thank the Lord for God putting Sean in my family. That maybe he can be a light to Janet and Gerald. That he'll lead them to the Lord. He told me last night, he said, you know what they need, Grandpa? He said, they need a good dose of what we've got. <laughs> 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 Praise the Lord. A stand will be dismissed.